Hi guys, I just got back from two weeks in the US. I went with my husband and my new baby daughter, Eleanor, to introduce her to my fabulous family and give her a taste of all of the things that are the Midwest. And of course, every time I go home, I see all of the things that I love and I miss about the US, and then I also see the things that I would love to tweak. I actually did a culture shock video a couple weeks ago about the things that I love about the US and the things that France does a lot better, so you can either check them out here or I'll put them in the link in the description below. So this time, I thought that it would be interesting to actually ask my husband some of the things that he doesn't love about the US when we're back home. If you've seen my video before, there might be a couple of similarities, so I won't go too deep into those, but surprisingly, he had a lot of things on his list that I wouldn't have even thought of. Now, disclaimer, my husband is married to an American, his daughter is half American, he loves the US, so don't take it personally, guys. I would love to hear in the comments below what you think, but don't forget that he is pro-USA. So this is all in good fun. Okay, ready? Let's go. Okay, this one is hilarious. It's different price glasses for different sizes. So we went to a restaurant with Robin. I'd never thought of this before. And it wasn't necessarily a fast food restaurant, but it was very casual. So when you ordered at the counter and you got your drinks and your tray, you went and you sat back down and you waited for your food, you could actually fill up your own glass. And everything was, like often in the US, refillable. You can fill up your glass as many times as you want. So the woman says to Robin, do you want a large or a medium or a small glass? And he goes, um, is there a price difference? And she was like, yes, you know, the small is the cheapest and large is the most expensive. And he was like, but I can refill as many times as I want right there. And she was like, yeah. And he was like, well then the small. And he came back to the table and he was like, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Do we have to pay if we like, the lazier you feel about getting up, the more you have to pay? And I was dying because it's true, I never thought about it that way. Like if you're not in your car going through like a drive through and you want more, if you're like sitting there, I mean, you really don't need the large drink when you can just take the small and refill a couple of times, right? But, I mean, I did take the large without thinking. Passing on the right when you're driving down the highway. So it's true in both France and in the US because we drive on the same side of the road that the right lane is for slower drivers and the left lane is for faster ones, so you pass people on the left. And in France, Robin has the feeling that French drivers stick to this and they really only use the left lane for passing even when there's a three lane highway or a four lane highway. Whereas in the US when he's driving and he's say in the second or third lane over, it's not surprising to have someone passing him on the right side of the, the lane. I would agree with him that it's not surprising and it's not something that ever really bothered me before. I never felt like the French stuck to that rule as hardcore as Robin thinks that they do. but. Every time he drives in the US, he makes a comment about people passing him on the right. So I'm interested to hear what you guys think about that one because I, I understand that one maybe a little less. Sales tax. This is something that I've talked about in my other video. It drives me absolutely nuts as well. So I completely understand for Robin that when he goes and buys something, it's really frustrating to get up to the cashier and realize that it's a bit more expensive than the price tag actually said. And of course, this isn't a big deal when it comes to some small purchases and it's an extra 10 cents on top of it. But if we're buying like anything big in the US, like an electronics, and you go um, to pick something up and you realize that the price is like $100 more than you thought it was going to be, he gets super frustrated all the time about this. And I kind of agree with him. Why don't you just include the price on the price tags? Hi, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Great. <laughs> This drives Robin nuts. <laughs> so he never understands why with people that we don't know that we need to ask them how they are. So whenever we walk into a store and someone's like, hello, how are you doing today? Robin's like, hello, I'm fine. And what he says all the time is like, I mean, do they expect a real response? If I'm having a bad day, can I say, actually, I'm having a bad day? And I'm like, no, <laughs> nobody cares about your bad day if you don't know them. <laughs> and he's like, well, then why do you even say it? And it's true, it's just kind of like a cultural phrase that comes out. Um, but I don't know that it necessarily bothers me. It's funny because in France, you have to say bonjour before you say anything. Even saying, you know, in the US, it's very polite to go up to someone and say, excuse me, ma'am and then ask your question. In France, it's not polite to go up to someone and say right away, excuse me, you have to say bonjour first. And so I'm saying to Robin, it's the same thing. I don't understand why I have to say bonjour before I say something. And I was like, I mean, we just 
tend to acknowledge someone by saying, hi, how are you? And he's like, well, it just feels really fake because they don't actually care how I am. Like, the extrovertness of the US sometimes drives him a little bit crazy. Um, as you can probably tell from my personality, I tend to have a lot of energy. I like talking, everything's awesome, everything's amazing. Um, and Robin like, tends to think it's just too much. So the funniest thing is he gets teased a lot um, by my family because we'll go, for example, to the movies all together. And we all leave the movie and we all loved the movie. And my sister's like, that was the best movie I've ever seen. And I'm over here like, that was awesome. And everyone's like, Robin, what did you think? And he was like, yeah, that's that was probably the best movie I've ever seen. And everyone's like, really? Because you seem pretty depressed about it. And he's like, I don't need to show so much emotion every time I talk. It seems like too much. It seems like a little bit overly done. I don't, I, I, I just, I can't bring myself to give you that much about a movie that I saw. And so of course, from my perspective, I'm always like, you play the negative Nancy role so well. Can you not like at least like up up your energy level a little bit? And he's like, well, can't you at least like play down yours a little bit? So I mean, to each his own. Getting ID'd for alcohol is yes something that I can understand for Robin is quite annoying. In France, I've never been ID'd for alcohol in my life. I'm, I'm 32, I definitely look like I'm over 21. Now I can carry a baby with me when I order a drink. So I think people aren't worried that I'm under 18 in France. And Robin, he's got dark hair, a big beard. He clearly looks over the age of 21, but he gets carded along with the rest of us every time we go somewhere. And what I find frustrating, because Robin thinks this is ridiculous. He's like, what do you mean the ID over the age of 65 if I look over the age of 65? I mean, I'm clearly over the age of, of 21. And I'm like, no, but they don't wanna be subjective and they don't wanna be, you know, it's not for that person to decide. It's just easier to say, if you don't look like you've got grandkids, then we're probably gonna ID you. And what's really frustrating for me is that Robin never brings his ID with because he always forgets. So the amount of times that we are in a restaurant or a bar with friends or my family and everyone's ordering drinks and they ask for IDs and Robin goes, ugh, I don't have my ID. And I'm like, what do you mean you don't have your ID? This isn't the first time. And then we have to have the manager come over and they have to give like special clearance for this time. But obviously next time he can't do that. I mean, I get where he's coming from. It's really annoying, but at the same time, I'm like, just bring your ID, man. This is something I've already talked about in one of my videos because I do feel like we often talk about how America is like the best country in the whole world. And I love the US, I love being American, and I love all of the positive things that have come from me being an American, but I wouldn't necessarily say such a statement as it is the best country in the world. And when you look at objective studies, the US is not the best country in the world based on like education, based on healthcare, based on opportunities. I mean, it's definitely among the best countries in the world, but it is not the best. And for Robin, he's like, I just don't understand this. Like, I mean, I love France, but France isn't the best country. And I, I would never say that. Our president would never say that. Like, it's just like such a false statement to make. He's like, hashtag false news right there. And I love the whole, like spirit and commodity and like atmosphere surrounding, like being proud to be an American. Um, but it's true that we often say, you know, very bold statements like that one. And it rubs Robin a bit the wrong way when it's like technically not true. As much as the French kiss or the bees used to kind of put me off when I first got to France, the hug does the same thing for Robin. So it's funny because I always found the bees like to be very personal, like getting your cheeks and your lips like that close to somebody else. And sometimes people will lay like a really cheeky kiss like right on your cheeks, even if you're really supposed to be air kissing. I always felt that to be like kind of invading my personal space a little bit. And Robin feels the same way about a hug. He's like, I just, I feel like it's very, very intimate um, you like touch bodies with the other person like you get quite close and everybody's like you know every part of your body is touching I just it makes me uncomfortable and I don't like it and it was funny because for I won't even go into the reasons why but when Robin first met my family he was by himself arriving at the airport and my mom had to pick him up on his own. And I said to Robin, be ready, she is gonna run up and hug you. They had never met before. And he was like, no, 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 I'll give her the bees. Like, I, she's not gonna hug me. And I was like, she will. And lo and behold, Robin messaged me being like, well, I had my first American hug with your mom. 
<laughs> and I think he's gotten used to it now, but it's true that it's not something that comes very like organic and naturally to him. He would much prefer to be kissing the air to my family than the full frontal hug, but I've taught him the side hug. So if he prefers to like go in for the side, that that would be okay too. Okay, so the final thing that kind of drives them nuts when we're home in the US is we spend a lot of time in grocery stores. Obviously, I miss some of those comfort foods I had as a kid growing up. And so we'll go to the grocery store and Robin is like, wow, there are so many 0% fat, 0% fat. And then he looks at the actual like full fat version and the 0% fat version and he's like, wait, but there's like five times more sugar in the 0% fat version which means that like it's really not better for you. So they're just lying to us. And it's true, I never really thought about it, but there are so many versions of low fat or 0% fat that are terrible for you and it's just better to go get the full version. And so it kind of drives him nuts when we go to the grocery store. So now he takes his Yuka app. Um, I'm sure the French people know what that is because it's pretty popular here, but it's pretty much an app that he's now shown my whole family where we go and we can like scan products and it gives you a ranking zero out of 100 to tell you like which one's better for your health globally. And so he can just, like look at the full fat and then scan the 0% and be like, see, I told you this full fat version is better. All right, guys, so those are the nine things that kind of bother my French husband when he's in the US. I would love to hear in the comments below what are the things that kind of rub you the wrong way sometimes, or even if you wanna talk about some of the things that you love, that's okay too. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys next week. Bisous.